Pluto transits. I've just made a video on Pluto transits and it was the most popular I ever made. People do seem to want to discuss this question and I've been asked to do something more on Pluto transits. So I'll say a bit more today. Pluto, death and rebirth. Change. A change from one of those states to the other. Either you're a living person or you're dead. Either you're not yet born or you're born. Those are the kind of black and white decisions that Pluto brings in life. And we can't think of life at all without knowing about death. Death exists. And death is actually fundamental to life. It's not different from life. There isn't life and death in opposition. There's life and death as a, a single dynamic change throughout existence. Things die. Things are born. There it is. Pluto's bringing that kind of consciousness to bear. Actually, would we but see it? on every single moment of our lives. Physical body is constantly going through death of cells and the mental body is constantly going through death of ideas and the emotional body moves away from what we did care about towards what we're going to care about next. And we let go of really important things like when you were three years old, you wanted the red crayon and not the blue crayon. And you were enraged because you couldn't have it. That was the central focus of your life when you were three years old. And you can't even remember that now. And we need to come to that level of consciousness that what we think of now as central and important and gripping and, and worth killing for and dying for, it's of absolutely no consequence pretty soon. Even the big things, the very big things, it becomes just how it is. We just have to live through some of this stuff. So death is life. Life is death. And there's no escaping it, even for a moment. And the people that um, try to do that, they're, they're just lost in this impossible to win silly game that they're playing of denial. Denials don't work. They just procrastinate. They, there's a coping me mechanism for people that actually can't cope. And when people, most people, all people mainly, think about a Pluto transit, if they know what it is, they, they, they kind of think about, how can I cope with that? Not, how can I turn this to my advantage? And the mindset of mastery requires this. How to turn this apparently difficult situation to my advantage? This is the challenge that we all have now. How to, do, how to deal with um, Pluto transits is how to turn dread into excitement and expectation. What do we dread? What, what, why should we care about change? And I think this is the clue. This is the real clue. What we need to replace dread is something that the Pluto transit gives us. And we're actually given the, the prize of all prizes. And we'll come to talk about that in a minute. So acknowledgement of death is one thing. The second thing that we have to do is acknowledge the, acknowledging that death is coming. As they say in um, the Game of Thrones, winter is coming. You know, it's the same thing with Pluto transits. Winter is coming all of the time. Death is coming. Now, specifically, you can see by your astrological dates and so on that Pluto is coming for you. You know, so what are you going to do? Well, first of all, welcome it. Because welcoming something makes it easier. It changes the force of it. Denying something, pretending that it's not happening, that kind of approach is going to increase the pain that you feel. You don't have to actually feel any suffering or pain at all through a Pluto transit. But you do have to acknowledge that it's happening. And if you welcome it because you affirm it's to your advantage, you've turned it around to your advantage, then 
it will be to your advantage. That quality of affirming that the Pluto transit is a good thing, that changes it into being a good thing. It's, it's the power of mind to do that. So about 10% of the population are Plutonian people, I would say. Um, Pluto is, is on one of the angles or in aspect to sun or moon. And certain Scorpio people, Stellian Scorpio people, are the Pluto people. So 10-15% of the population would come under that category. So one in six of us kind of, um, we like it. Actually, we enjoy Pluto transits because it vitalizes our whole scenario, our whole scenarios, our circumstances of life. Are, are 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 made more more so and and we like that we like that, that that sense of being alive and and that's what pluto really does it just makes you aware of, of that sense of being alive and wanting more wanting more engagement wanting more intensity wanting things to be real and true and an absolute that appetite for authenticity is given to us during a Pluto transit and you can apply this to anything whether the Pluto transit is to your Venus or Mercury or Mars or whatever the way in which you interpret that energy the Venus probably to do with friendships values relationships Mars to do with assertiveness you know Mercury to do with how you think and how you talk these kind of things they need to change now and how we welcome it is to work out that change before it's forced upon us. To work out the change voluntarily on our own say-so. Because none of these transits, none of them, are necessary if you do the work without them. The transits are only moving you through a difficult process if you've not moved through it voluntarily. So if you want to go through a Pluto transit smoothly, then you do the work before it comes. You know it's coming, so you get on with doing the work. Well, what's the work? Exposing the untruth within you and releasing that. That's the work. Pluto's job is not to kill off the good guys, is to kill off the bad guys, very simply put. Whatever is wrong, whatever is not in alignment with soul, with the needs of the earth plane, all of the things that don't work, Pluto has to kill them off. That's his job. And we want that. We want that because we don't want to carry shit with us. Why would we? It, it, it's, it's, it's waste. You know, and, and that applies not only to physical waste, but to emotional waste and intellectual waste as well. That which was once feeding us has nurtured us. We've taken what goodness we can from our experiences and our people and all of it. And, and then we want to let go of that which is not useful anymore. And if we don't, then we, we're constipated. It, it, it's, it's a very, very good metaphor. I, I, I spoke recently of my father whose death allowed me to see his life. I'd never seen his life until after he died. And I was given the job of clearing up after him. And he had, I mean, um, let me just think this. He had 70 years worth of documents uh, to do with his car repairs and so on. And he had um, the complete set of a certain magazine that lasted 30 years and he had every every week <laughs> piled up in the attic. And, and such things as that, things that were out of date some decades ago, and he kept them all. In other words, he never cleared out his attic. He never got rid of his shit. And um, Pluto can, can't enjoy that, won't have that, and, and he resisted his Pluto transit. Well... I suppose you think you can do that, but that's not actually what happens. That, that, that resistance, that unnatural state of, of gritting your teeth and not allowing what needs to happen to happen, 
like you're constipated, that kind of feeling, is is, is going to create within you some physical abnormality. It's not okay to be that way, to grit your teeth and to try and control everything. It's just not okay. And and the body will always register that which is not okay. And if it's seriously not okay, which this is, then it will kill you off and you'll get something that you'll die of later. Maybe not now, but later. And and that's what happened with my dad, you know. He, he got the disease that killed him, you know. Um, because he wouldn't go through his Pluto transit. So that's the first thing to do. Empty out of your life everything that's not serving you anymore. Get rid of the stuff that's waste material. Now, we are talking about people here. We are talking about beloved possessions here. We are probably talking about things that you have valued for sentimental reasons, but aren't serving you at all anymore. They're limiting your growth. We're talking about those kind of things which are the most difficult to let go of. Beliefs about religion, perhaps, and beliefs about the need to behave in conformity with social requirements, perhaps. So how to anticipate what Pluto wants to kill off? Um, you have to go through a, a self-examination on a profound level, knowing full well that you tell yourself lies. So this self-examination will only take you so far. Then you need to ask somebody who's going to tell you the truth and who knows you really well. That's a rare person in your life. The only ones that you can be truly convinced will tell you the truth about who you actually are, I think, would be your siblings. Or perhaps if you have children. Nobody else tells you the truth. They've all got an agenda. And, and they'll bend the presentation to soften your feelings and so on. Siblings don't do that. So you need to find out what's wrong. Well, what is wrong? And if you look at your circumstances, what's wrong about your circumstances? And um, if you have to cover up the truth about some aspect of your life, then that's wrong. If you have to tell lies, then that's wrong. If, for example, your boss says to you, how do you enjoy your work here? And you say, oh, yes, very well, thank you, sir. That's probably a lie. For some people, not necessarily for you, but for some people, it's a lie. Any lie that you have to tell, you know, like, oh, I've got a headache. I don't want to tonight, my love. Any lie at all is evidence that something's wrong in your life. Telling lies isn't OK. I know everybody does it. I probably do it, but it's not OK. Why would we tell lies? Why on earth would we tell lies? It's because there's some penalty to pay if we pay the truth well pluto's saying let me help you with that let me take away those things in your life which you've had to lie about so if something's wrong with your circumstances change them before pluto does is there something wrong with your mindset now this is a little bit trickier how do you examine your mindset Check it out against philosophy, spiritual teachings, um, wisdom words in, in conversations on in your social life and um, perhaps on, online and stuff. Just see what you agree with and what you disagree with and, and, and come to the understanding of whether or not you are one side or the other side of a particular line. And I'll, t I'll tell you what that line is. Quite simply, it's the line of optimism and pessimism. If you're a pessimist, there's something wrong with your mindset. If you're depressed or anxious or afraid of life or um, angry or, or sad or, or, or these kind of things, actually, that's not rightness, that's wrongness. If in your mindset you're optimistic, you're happy, you're clear-minded, you have no prejudice, 
if you've got that kind of clear mind and you don't have any negative thoughts, then you're on the right side of the line. An absolute sort of improbable here, very unlikely. So, you know, just see those aspects of how you think which are wrong. Just notice them. Because Pluto will have them, for sure. <laughs> Pluto will exacerbate the condition until you have to deal with it. And then you come to the understanding, what's the matter with my circumstances? What's the matter with my mindset? What's the matter with me? And there is only thing that, one thing that could be wrong. There's only ever one thing that could be wrong with you. And that's you're not being true to yourself. Everything else is from that. If you're being true to yourself in every moment and you take all of the consequences of that, however frightened you might think that you are, which you're probably not, you take it all. And this idea of being afraid of the future, of being worried about what might happen, this self-indulgent, self-pitying, neurotic, pessimistic attitude to life is what's making you unhappy. Having the idea that you could suffer pain is what brings you pain. Pluto won't allow that. Pluto wants to kill that off. That's its function. Because pessimism and negative thinking of any kind at all will move you in that direction. Optimism, faith, self-confidence, happiness itself will move you in that direction. This is the nature of life. You follow your attention. And if you give attention to negative stuff, you follow that down. And if you give attention to positive stuff, you follow that up. And Pluto's just reminding you, with a real slap in the face, which of those two conditions you're involved in. In other words, if you are a man of faith or a woman of self-confidence, Pluto will show you what that brings. It will intensify this formula between the mindset and the circumstances. And when you understand that, you realize that your function in life is not to control anything out there. That doesn't work. You can't control life. It's bigger than you. You can't. It might seem like you do for a while. Yeah, that's true. You don't know what's going on inside you, though, when you do that. Control of that out there, it's dangerous, and it kills people off on Pluto transits quite often. What you can do is to take that appetite you have for control and apply it to yourself. Apply it to your mind. Control your mind. If you notice yourself thinking something negative, Say a prayer. So you start to train yourself. Negative thought prayer. Negative thought prayer. And eventually you'll just do the prayer. Which is positive and sacred. So you, 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 your mind will know that you don't embrace. You don't welcome negativity. You train yourself towards a mindset of optimism. And we see that um, what Pluto transits can do. Which probably no other transits can do, is to offer you the greatest gift that life has to offer. None of the other planetary transits can do this, and without a Pluto transit, it's unlikely to occur. And so what is this secret to life, the, the treasure, the, the, the treasure true, the real gift of life? What is it that Pluto gives that nothing else can give? And the answer is faith. If you have faith, then Pluto transits are easy. If you have faith, then life is easy. And you move towards happiness all of the time. If you have faith, then you don't have fear. It's the treasure beyond all else. It's, it's incomparably um, precious compared to money and, and things. You know, that doesn't make you happy, but faith does. So this is what your Pluto transit is for. 
it's so that you can actually develop faith, the greatest treasure on, on earth, on, in life. So letting go of control is essential to this. And, and like, how do you do that? Control is not a decision that you enact. It's a knee-jerk emotional need that you, you dump on the world. Uh, all of your controls are, are, are bad, unless they're the expression of mastery. Um, but I'm talking about emotionally controlling other people so they don't hurt your feelings, that kind of control. That's neurotic. You want to get rid of that. And um, so you learn about your attempts to control other people. And you are controlling them. You're trying to. You might not think you are, but the way you ask your questions, the way you listen to their answers, the way you ignore what they said in order to get your sort of point of view across, um, the, the approval you have for certain clothes that they wear or certain opinions or drinking habits or the use of narcotics and you know, all of your opinions, that's controlling them. It makes a difference. To who you are it might not make a difference to who they are but those kind of things have to be released in other words judgments about people if you try and control other people it inherently implies a judgmental attitude but that, that's not right judgment is not a good idea deciding whose life is a good life and whose life is a bad life it's not your business let it go so judging other people has to has to stop. Judging yourself has to stop. Self-criticism, for example. Measurement, yeah, fine. But judgment, no, never, never fine. So, you know, that those two things are really important. So how do we move from a position of, of trying to control that which cannot be controlled and the, the antidote to control is trust. So if you're in a position of authority, try to develop an increased trust of your, your people. Trust people. If they let you down, okay, you can change your opinion, but you trust them first. Live in trust. Allow yourself, therefore, to be disappointed sometimes, to be taken advantage of sometimes. I, I've been ridiculed often because people have taken advantage of me. But I can assure you that that's never happened twice. I'd rather live in trust and have people take my money unfairly than live in a distrustful attitude of mind. Then you trust yourself. You know, you trust yourself which means following your spontaneous intuition very often. Trusting that even if this doesn't work, that will. You know, just trusting that life's okay. That's another part of it. And, you know, you've got to trust um, that the soul is, is partly influential in what's occurring in your life. And, and that behind that, God is, is operating. You know, if you get to trust all of that, then... When Pluto comes along, you can just do your dance with it. It's a different kind of dance, more intense music, you know, but it is a dance. And, and you just have to acknowledge that some things are going to leave you. Now, knowing that, you can start the grieving process earlier. If you're actually in a relationship and, and you know that it's, it's, it's finished, you know do the right things anymore you're not in rapport anymore it's been months and months since you've seen the love light in the eyes of your partner it's gone and however dutiful you feel however kind and loving you'd like to be the truth is you know it's, 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 it's finished you know that be honest with yourself you know that we don't have love anymore in our relationship it's dead so grieve over it Distance yourself from your partner. Don't expect anything anymore. Just move away. 
allow the separation to occur when it occurs, not later when Pluto comes along and says, that's dead some years ago, you need to get rid of the waste now, or you get constipated. So that's the, one of the things that you do. You, you, you kind of live the inevitable as soon as you become aware of it. In in the seven word system, we have this idea within, within goodbye energy that a realization comes first and then a decision. But in a master, the realization and the decision are momentary together. You have the realization, then the decision is made immediately. I remember once a bit of information came to me about something that was going on behind my back in secret. And, and I realized in that moment that this very long-term commitment I'd made, a 25-year project, was no longer founded in truth. There was this secret nastiness going on behind my back. And within the space of a, a second, I, I made a completely irrevocable decision to, to leave in that moment. Because the realization gave rise to a decision. Try to do that in your life. If you know that your your work isn't okay anymore, your relationship isn't okay anymore, your child just isn't actually behaving properly, they're in their adult period now, they're still living with you, they need to leave. You know, there are certain things that need to happen because they don't work anymore. Well, let that realization give rise to a decision immediately. However profound the question is, to give up a 25-year project in the split second, that is why I, I feel free, because I can do that. Because nobody's going to uh, um, be able to manipulate me if I have that degree of willingness to trust the future. I had no way of knowing where my income would come. If there would be another income, I didn't know that. I just knew that this was wrong and life was always right. The faith I have that I'm always looked after by life itself, by God, by my soul, by whatever, that gives me freedom. And this comes from my being very happy to be a Pluto person. I, I have this intense sort of Pluto energy, my sun Mars conjunction squared by Pluto. I welcome Pluto. I like it. I play violent sport games. I, I, I get involved in sort of risky situations in business. I don't mind if everything blows up because whether I'm, I'm successful or an abject failure or, or whatever, it's life. You know, Pluto people live in the fast lane. They, they just want to process what's coming next. Process this, process that, process the other quickly, quickly, quickly. Get to the heart of the matter, the truth of the, the question in hand. And people who are not into Pluto, they, they don't know about that until a Pluto transit comes along. It is inescapable. You're not going to avoid it. And what you aren't going to be able to avoid is that life is intense. And that's, that's the truth of it. Life is intense. And if you're not, well, that's going to be rather uncomfortable. So sometimes you have to get intense. Grasp the nettle, grasp life, and deal with what needs to be dealt with. Then you're up to the, the, the task of dealing with this Pluto transit. And by dealing with it, I mean, turn it to your advantage. Introduce the mindset of mastery into this situation. And you will come to terms with something that, that previously you, you felt anxious about. Now, the, the final thing is to understand that Pluto is, is not only death, it's birth. And... So in any situation, when you can see that that's finished, whatever it is, that's died on me, you, you, then you need to look around. Where's the light? There must therefore be light. That's the law. It's a cosmic law. If you remember the yin-yang symbol, there's always light within the darkness, as much as there's always darkness within the light, and it changes from one to the other. That's the most profound symbol I've ever come across, that wavy line indicating dynamism, light and dark polarized, but there's neither of them absolute. Light within darkness, darkness within the light. So when your life is at its darkest, 
that's the time when you can see the light of the future, the light of new birth. And when you see it, give it nurture. Treat the opportunity for something new, like a new project or a new idea. Nurture it like a, like a baby. Allow it a period of gestation, which makes you feel quieter inside. You know, you, you want to give a quiet, comfortable environment for the gestation period. And then when the child is born, allow it the same kind of womb-like warmth or security for a period of time. This is your new projects I'm talking about. That's how to treat that which is new and vulnerable, to treat it as you would a baby. I bet you don't do that with your life. You know, take an idea and treat it like, like that. Love it into strength and, and, and health and the ability it has to be self-sustainable. If you release your projects into the world as self-sustainable ideas that will or will not go any further, then, then you finish the job. Your job is not to control your idea into the future. It's to nurture your idea, which is there are controlling feedback systems, part of the game, but there's also learning on your sort of side. So you have to learn about what's new. And this is the, the mindset we want with the Pluto transit. What's coming? You know, I'll deal with that. I'll deal with that fully and intensively, sure. But what's coming? Where's, where's the opportunity here? And if you actually put your mind on the potential for something wonderful to occur, like a baby being born, something wonderful is occurring, and it's sacred. We have that sense of sacredness in birth, and we, as we do in death. This is a real clue to Pluto. It's sacredness. Sacredness is very difficult to find in, in more ordinary life. We can create it with practices of chanting and incense and, and so on, candles. We create sacredness, but it only arises naturally in nature, really, and especially in birth and death. And if you actually acknowledge that your Pluto transit is a movement towards sacredness, is, is a reminder of your sacredness, it's a way through which you can remember yourself as sacred and apply that to whatever so pluto venus sacred relationship pluto mercury make sure you speak in sacredness pluto mars do the right thing pluto jupiter expand your sense of god pluto saturn be in right relationship with the community. Make all of these things sacred. Make your life sacred. And Pluto transits are just a delight, a tremendous opportunity for moving forward 